Hi guys, join me today as I make some plantain chips. Do you know plantain chips is an universal snack that everyone loves? By the way, tell me who doesn't love a good crunchy plantain chips? In today's video, I will be taking you through the process of making a perfect crunchy plantain chips, be it for your own use or for commercial purposes. What to expect in this video include the best plantain to use for your plantain chips, essential tools that you will need, step-by-step -step instruction for quick preparation, tips for seasoning and flavoring your plantain chips, storage tips to keep your plantain chips fresh and crispy always. If this is what you like to watch, please don't go anywhere, keep watching. I will start with the very first one which is telling you the kind of plantain you will need for a perfect and crunchy plantain chips. A lot of people make this mistake thinking it's going to like cost them less but at the long run it's going to cost you a good production. So the kind of plantain you want to purchase is a very good and strong one. These strong plantains are sweet either black or ripe so you need to get a very strong plantain big in size and looking healthy. Okay, you know those kind of plantain you can keep and it gets ripe on its own without adding any chemical or trying to force it to ripe. That is the kind of plantain you want. Getting this kind of plantain will save you a lot of stress, including when you are frying. As you can see, I bought a very good quality plantain. I actually just left this plantain one night and you can see it's already ripening. This is the kind of plantain that you need. A plantain that is good and strong. Next up, let's talk about the tools you need. The tools are very, very minimal and very basic, okay? You will need a sharp knife to take off the skin and also to cut in case of necessity. And next, we need a plantain uh, slicer, just like so. This particular one came with my nicer dicer set and it has been really helpful. This reason is to give your plantain the same shape. You want to maintain the same shape. So you will need a nicer dicer or a plantain slicer that will give you that shape so you don't end up with some crooked shape and all of that. So when you package, all of your plantain looks beautiful and that, okay? As you can see, you don't need a lot of tools. All you need is a knife, a slicer and a bowl. That is all you need for your plantain um, chip slicing, okay? The next one you need is your frying pan, your cooker and yeah, that's very, very basic. move quickly to common mistake and struggle some of us face when we are making plantain chips as you can see i've gone ahead to slice in a bowl and i'm still going to show you another way to make it easier okay slicing in a bowl is not bad at all mostly when you're making for own use like a small quantity but when you're making for commercial purpose you tend to find it as a struggle because separating it into your oil or when it gets into your oil it sticks together that can be a struggle and that can really be disappointing you get what i mean so when you slice in a bowl you can prevent yourself from um, oil splashes but then it's going to slow you down because you will need to separate it all just like and pick it into your oil and you know when you're making a lot this is going to be like a difficult task to do okay so in the next clip i'll be showing you the, the other way to go about it which i feel is the easiest even for home use plantain cheese is very very universal like i said and making it from home can be really really nice because at least you will know what you are consuming you will know the type of oil you are using you will know the special of plantain you are getting your family are going to enjoy it and yeah it's fun to make so 
consider making it for yourself even if you are not in business with this the first mistake you need to avoid when frying your plantain chips is not to crowd your pots don't overcrowd your pot guys if you do you are going to suffer the consequence by having oily and yeah you get to see it because i actually made this video very detailed i did it and i overcrowded my pot in a clip and you are going to see how it came out number one is going to take longer to cook number two is going to soak your oil you get what i mean you think it's faster because you are going to put a lot of um, plantains in your oil but it's going to be difficult because it's going to take faster to uh, longer to cook as you can see this plantain chips is almost ready because the pot is not overcrowded and you want to fry on high heat okay you don't reduce your heat when you're frying plantain chips fry on high heat it's flat enough and it will fry easily okay another thing you don't want to do is to add seasoning to your plantain before frying it will definitely affect the crunchiness don't do that so one of the things you need to note when you're frying your plantain chips is once your oil stop bubbling your plantain chips is ready it's left for you to decide the shade of uh, brownness or goldenness that you want so go ahead and leave it if you want or leave it light like so if you also want it okay and the ripeness of your plantain determines how dark or how crunchy um how um, light in complexion it gets so go ahead and note all of that so when you're making your plantain chips you don't make any of these mistakes When you remove a set of plantain chips from your oil, you want to give the oil a bit of time to get back to the right uh, temperature. You know, when you remove it, it's already like cold. So give it a bit of time to get back to the right temperature to welcome a new fresh batch. Okay, so now I'm showing you the fastest way to get a bulk order of plantain chips ready by uh, slicing straight into your oil this is safe guys but if you are clumsy you might want to avoid this one but it's totally safe because at the end of the day i didn't get any oil splashing on me or anything it's totally safe okay so go ahead and slice straight into your oil this way it doesn't stick together you don't get to start separating before adding to your oil another thing i will be sharing with you in this batch is overcrowding as you can see i have done a ton of plantains and i am still slicing more because i intentionally want it to be overcrowded so you can see how long it takes to cook and how oily or how the complexion or the overall result came out okay so now my pot is overcrowded we'll stare and we'll wait to see what it turns out to be like
Normally, my plantain chips take less than 5 minutes to fry thoroughly, but this is 10 to 12 minutes later and we are still get, trying to get this to be crunchy and fully um, dry, okay? So this is what you get when you overcrowd your pot. It tends to soak. As you can see, it's forming a blister. This one didn't form any blister. It's just as, as flat as it should. You can see for yourself. It's crunchy from the start. You don't need to air it before it gets crunchy. It's crunchy from the moment you fry it, okay? But this one doesn't get as crunchy as the other one. And as you can see, the complexion, this one obviously soaked some oil, while the other one didn't at all. So, um, when you're frying in a large quantity, like when you overcrowd your pot, your oil will get reduced quick. Okay? So, while you're trying to save time by overcrowding your pot, your oil will always reduce faster. So, why not go ahead and add it bit by bit and get your oil to cook up everything you have at hand and come out faster if you think it will okay so this is just the tip i intend to share because i have been in both situation and i just choose my battle right i just choose to always go in gradually one plantain at a time if i'm doing it for home use like in a small batch like so but if i'm doing for commercial i can use a bigger uh, frying pan and still do not overcrowd my pot so you can see i'm still stirring because i need to get to the right dryness before i can take it off the heat i added some onion to this uh, plantain chips i'm making because this is actually for our own consumption school and resume and i like to make my daughter snack from home myself okay she doesn't do biscuits and she likes cook uh what's it called cheese balls cheese balls is not the way it used to be i tasted it and it's not good at all so i went ahead and make some chin chin plantain chips and other snack i think she likes and she will want to take to school so this is part of what i made and yeah i added onions for that reason if you are making for commercial purpose please do not add onions not everyone like the flavor of onions in their plantain chips okay i just want to set that straight and let you all know why i did it so i'm just going to go ahead and fry the rest of the bash and also share other information as i go I enjoy about the snack I make both for sale and for home consumption is the fact that I use quality products concerning the oil I use a very good uh, quality oil I normally use golden penny soya oil but then it became too expensive and I switched to buying uh, golden terra okay it's also a soya oil and it's very good that's what I'm using in this video it came out really nice it smelled good it doesn't have odor but yeah you just get that comfort that okay fine you're using something very fine okay so the advantage of you making your snack or your kids snack yourself is because you will know what you are consuming a lot and lot of people use really poor quality oil out there and yeah for you to be sure of what you are consuming it's best you make yours yourself using this method you are good to go Another thing I would like to share in this clip is the fact that a lot of people put sugar in their plantain chips. Trust me, when you get a quality plantain, you won't be needing sugar at all, okay? Adding sugar to plantains has proven to be a very bad health, um, uh, health, health consign. So go ahead and make sure you make your own plantain chips and there's no added sugar. Adding sugar is just to sweeten it all probably when they get a very poor quality plantain. But when you get the right one like I did or like I introduced to you earlier, you won't need it at all. You only need salt just for taste and that will be all. You will get your plantain sweet because your plantain is good and it's quality. So guys, I hope I have made 
a lot of points in this video don't go anywhere because i still have a bit more to share about packaging and seasoning now let's get to seasoning for all of the batches i have fried so far this is why i do immediately i take it out from the heat i sprinkle some salt on it just a bit and then i shake it up just like so this set is kind of brown because these are the ripe ones if you remember in the beginning some of my plantains were already getting ripe so what you want to do is to shake it up so that the salt can mix quickly while it's still hot okay and once you are done add all of it together leave it to a um, air out for a while just so it can be 100 percent crunchy and once you are done with that your plantain chips is ready you can see it's not even breaking out okay one of the challenges people have faced while making plantain chips whether for home use or for business is either they are too thick and chewy or they are too thin and fragile and don't even get me started on the importance of achieving that perfect crunch as you can see this is very very crunchy yet it's not even thick and it's not too fragile this is the best way to make your plantain cheese if you follow these steps you will surely have positive feedback to share so let me know in the comment section if this video was helpful if you'll be trying this method let me know and thank you so much for always and yeah i'll see you in my next video guys this is what my plantain chips look like i actually bought this bunch of plantain i wanted it to be like a unripe plantain and yeah before the next morning it started ripening and i had no choice than to just make it all okay now let's go to packaging like i said this is for my daughter's school snack and i have to package it in smaller quantity but yeah if you are doing this for businesses either you are packaging like so or you can get a jar a airtight jar that you can use to package whichever way make sure your plantain chips is airtight and you don't get to like put it in a place where it will break okay so i actually just do this put it in a bag and just put in a lunch bag on days a school take snack so guys this snack was very yummy my mommy did a very great job please subscribe to this channel bye i will be seeing you all in our next video please don't forget to like comment share this video to your audience and also to all my new subscribers Thank you so much for choosing me. If you have watched this video to this extent and you still haven't subscribed, please do well to click on the subscribe button. I shall love you guys so much. Bye. See you in my next video. Bye.